my friends. We are on Route 66 and we're in, as you can see above us, Springfield, home of Lincoln. So why don't we just, you know, start it by going to the home of Lincoln. Days with Jordan the Lion and your old pal Scott Michaels from Dearly Departed. It all begins right now. Just for proof, there's Scott. People have said that I lie and that Scott isn't actually sitting beside me when I show him. It just gets very quiet in the morning. They think you're a ghost. <laughs> You've done it to yourself. <laughs> Look at that state capitol, that is beautiful. The building's got a little bit of the Wrigley Park outfield look to it right now. <laughs> oh my gosh, he's here! Nobody told me you'd be here today! Well, nobody told you to be here either. So where'd, you come, from? where'd you come from this time? Uh, I started in Chicago. On some, I'm from the future. I came from a place called Route 66. Route 66. Well, you know, a lot of the routes in Illinois were originally Indian trails. The one that goes down to St. Louis that the railroad follows that. That was the engine just to come up on that road and hunt. Yeah, this was a wonderful place to hunt. When I first came here, there were deer all around the governor's mansion where, where that is now. It was a great woods. Take a look at that. That's the original 1934 marker. Yeah, these are Lincoln's canes, even though they say he doesn't necessarily know to be needing them. They are probably gifts. Little uh, carminative balsam bottles. They said that uh, it was discovered in the backyard of Lincoln's home during an archaeological dig in 1985. And they said it's the same age and everything that would have matched up with when he lived there. And it said it's widely known that Mr. Lincoln was prone to intestinal discomfort and this medicine may have been prescribed to him by his brother-in-law, William Wallace, Dr. William Wallace. Well, let's go see the neighborhood. This picture, this is the home that we're gonna see, and it's called the Great Republican Rally at Lincoln's Home. This was 1860. All these people on his front lawn. 1844, Mary Abraham and nine-month-old Robert moved into the little house that we're gonna see on 8th and Jackson. Rapidly growing community was the home to immigrants from Ireland, Germany, France, and Portugal, as well as free African-American families from 10 different states. One thing I really love is that this entire street has been kind of trapped in time. You can see old timey cameras over here set up, pointed looking over at the Lincoln's home over here. The young Abe and Mary Todd. Take a look at this picture. This is Abraham and Willie standing on the corner. Not in Winslow, Arizona, we'll get to that, but they're actually standing on the corner. Would have been right over here, let's match that up. That really gives you some perspective, doesn't it? That long ago, God, and it's still here. So the great thing is that they actually offer free tours of this house. You just have to go sign up for it. So we were able to get a tour. The Lincolns lived here from 1844 to 1861. And seven years after he rode into Springfield on a borrowed horse with all his belongings and two saddlebags, Lincoln bought this small cottage that would grow right along with him and his family until it became a full two-story house. This would be the first and only home he ever owned. Lincoln's lived here for 17 years. Sons Eddie, Willie, and Tad were born in this house. Abraham and Mary Lincoln's friends and neighbors gathered for Eddie's funeral in 1850 here. From this home, Lincoln's firstborn son, Robert, left for college in 1859 as well. Wow, talk about a true family home. It says in 1861, Lincoln closed the front door one last time as he left his home in Springfield, Illinois for Washington, D.C. as president-elect of the United States. Ahead was the task to govern a nation divided by slavery and to preserve a government, he later said, whose leading object was to elevate the condition of men, to lift artificial weights from all shoulders, to clear the paths of laudable pursuits for all, to afford all an unfettered start and a fair chance in the race of life. So before you take the tour, you get to see here that house was a one and a half story cottage that started in 1839 then the family moved into the home 
Then the house was raised to two full stories and they lived there for that whole time. Oh, you're a genius, Scott. You just noticed that as we were looking at the photo of them and we already pointed out that camera setup, he's like, that's probably what that's for is to recreate where those people are over there. There's that camera and that they were recreating that photo if they wanted to. So here's the camera setup we were talking about. I just think that's very cool. Let's kind of put our camera through there and see what it looks like. If you read this, it says, this view of Lincoln's home has been most frequently photographed through the years. We invite you to step into history and take a photo from this location. Look, his name's even on the door. All right, we're going in. Don't go on into the dining room. I think you'll see what I'm talking about. Go right up to that railing, and you can lean or touch on that railing. Can you corner by here? Yes. That is the original house-ish. No. I mean, not the original original, but- This is the original house. But that was, no, this is, that was just another cottage, but that's what theirs looked like all the way around. Okay. That's an original home also. Thank you. You're welcome. This is exactly what it was. So wow, this is their furniture, too. Down. Please touch your lean against the railing, and I'm going to get behind Wow. All right, go right up to that railing, please. You can touch or lean on the railing. Thank you. I'm sorry. I'm going to get behind you about halfway. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Thank you. All right, so let's talk about when they bought this home in 44. Front parlor, folks, you're fine. Front parlor. Back parlor, folks, well, I hate to break it to you, but this was their bedroom. Just so you know. Until 1856, when they literally have the roof raised and the second story gets added, and the bedrooms then will get moved upstairs, and then they make this a back parlor. So if you look at the drawings on the floor, you're going to see the room in front of you. These are campaign drawings for 1860 for the presidential election. So I mentioned in the BC that he was a Whig and he served four terms in the Illinois House of Representatives. He also will serve one term in the U.S. House of Representatives. He's still a Whig. But by the 1850s, the Whig Party will be gone. So to replace that boy, they will have a new party called the Republican Party come along. So in 1850, he tries two different times to become a U.S. Senator in Illinois as a Republican. The second time was 58, the famous Lincoln-Douglas race. He loses both of those times. But please keep in mind that was your time period when the U.S. Senators were chosen by our state legislators and not by the voters. That won't change until the 17th Amendment. All right, so now it's 1860. Many, many men, for whatever reason, wanted to be president back then. So many of your former Whigs will become Republicans. You know, the Chicago will be the home for the next Republican convention in May of 1860. On the third ballot, Abraham Lincoln will get the nomination. The party is very well aware they've got a big PR job ahead. Of course, he was well known in Illinois, national not so much. That takes us to these drawings then. This gentleman worked for Frank Leslie's newspaper. It was a paper out of New York. The artist will come to Springfield. He will draw what he sees in the town. He takes them back to New York where they are finished and then published and then people can see something about the Lincoln family and the felony rumor that they were still living in a log cabin in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> so now we have November of 1860. It's a four-way race even now. As you know, of course, Abraham Lincoln will win with about 40% of the popular vote. He and Mary will seriously consider selling the house. But they'll change their minds, so instead of selling, they won't have tenants. They'll rent the house out while they're in the And they have to deal with their stuff, so they will have a tag sale, a stage sale. He was standing. We're not exactly sure where he was standing, but we know that he was It was in this part of the parlor that he was told that he won the nomination. That is so cool. Now, when they offered him the nomination, his reaction was not yippee yay His reaction was let me think about it. 
Mm -hmm. It waits about four days to write a letter or something. Now we're in the dining room. Oh, well, we're still What are you going to do, right? All right, come on down here. All the way. Come all the way down to the end of this railing. Again, you can lean or touch on the railing. I'm going to get behind you. The carpet. Come on, yeah. Come on, yeah. Again, go right up to the ring. Come on, yeah. 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 So in the evening, this is where the family would gather. If the boys were not in their bedrooms playing or were not outside, this was the room downstairs they were supposed to be in. But we know that always didn't work out. So let's pretend it's evening. We'll pretend Mr. Lincoln is home. Can somebody tell me how tall he was? Do you remember? 6'4". Very good, 6'4". So if I gave you a quiz today, like which was his favorite chair, you'd have to have an E, none of the above, right? Uh, we do think there may have been a sofa on this wall. But over here, we also know he would just spread out on the floor and get comfortable. So he'll be reading maybe to the family, the playing floor. with the children. Mary might be sitting to your right. Um, that mirror and sewing table belong to Mary. And for many years in this household, she will make their clothing. She made Mr. Lincoln shirts for a long time. And the boys either or maybe are playing with dad or maybe begging mom for a snack. Or they could be to your left at the round table. The chess set is a reproduction. But that big two-story brown box was their stereoscope. So for those of you who remember what a Viewmaster is or was, that would have been your early Viewmaster. Those were expensive at the time. This will give us a little insight into their family finances. In other words, they were doing pretty well. If you look at the drapes, all that extra fabric at the bottom, this was a Victorian time frame where appearances were so important. All that extra fabric at the bottom was only really served as a status symbol. You're just showing people you can afford to put extra fabric in your drapes. It's typical of the time period for middle class, upper middle class families. Hmm. So any questions in here? Quick question. Yes. What was Lincoln's middle name? He didn't have one. Ah. It's Abraham Lincoln. So now we're going upstairs and that's the original banister. How cool is that? I was just joking with Scott. I'm like, you ever think you put his butt up there and slid all the way down just for the heck of it? Probably a little forward thinking for the time though, right? <laughs> and this is the second floor that was added later. called a bedroom suite arrangement. So it would be his side and her side. So currently <laughs> you're in his side. If you look up, it's not because he was tall that these ceilings are so high. It's just when they added the second story, the angle that the builder built them, because you'll notice next door the ceiling's already quite a bit lower. This is not the original bed in this room, but it is just like the original bed. We've already established that he was 6'4". This bed is 6'9" because I have people who walk in and think it's too short and his feet hung over the edge. That is not the case. He had several extra inches in this bed. He did not sleep with his hat on. He did not sleep with his hat on. His original house. wardrobe. And then in the other corner of the desk also was Mr. Lincoln's. He, that desk saw lots of use, especially in the evenings when he couldn't sleep. Now the desk leaves the house at some point when we finally get it back several decades later. They do think maybe it's a little shorter than when it left. One of the theories is perhaps one of the legs broke, so to make it even, they cut the other three legs to make it. We're not certain exactly, but that was his dust. You couldn't see the colors, but we think we're very close from those drawings and everything. So what do you think of this wallpaper? So be, tell, be honest. Awesome. Awesome, seriously? 
<laughs> I love it. And we know this because when the city yeah, of Illinois exactly had the property, they were working on the laws, that law to be specific, and they found a piece of the original, which we still own. Uh, when Mary purchased this, it did come in a couple of other color choices, and this is the one she selected. Again, it's very Victorian. Oh, they only burned wood here. All right, let's come on next door then. So we're going to need to go to the door, but don't walk in the hallway yet. Oh, a camera! You don't see those very often anymore. You don't see much of those very often anymore. Yeah, you sure don't. <laughs> come on in, up to the railing. Come on in. Mary Todd's room. Keep it coming, keep it coming. Is that a standing desk, I guess? Her side of the bedroom suite, sort of like her side. And if you look up already, the ceiling is quite a bit lower. Mm -hmm. You've got the wallpaper in here, the same wallpaper to give you that sense of the two rooms together like a suite. The dresser Mary brought when she moved from Lexington, when she was Mary and Todd. Now, remember, we said he's 6'4", she's 5'2". That is her rocking chair and footstool. The dress is not Mary's, but it's an example of a dress of the time period. So we have across the hall, initially, the first bedroom over there would have been Robert's room since he was the oldest. So Willie and Tad will actually sleep in here on a trundle bed that was low enough to the ground. It would fit under Mary's bed during the day, mm. and then at night it would be pulled out, and that's where, see, I, I did that because I pointed, that's where Willie and Tad would <coughs> sleep at night. But in 1860, our big brother will leave to go to school out east, so Willie and Tad will get that room next. So what you see today, it's Willie and Tad's room. And surprisingly, you're going to recognize quite a few of the games and toys in there, because my guess is you guys played with them, and maybe your parents played with them. Some of those things are timeless. <laughs> Marbles. So this would have been Robert's room first. Okay, so boys' bedroom, did we recognize some of the games and toys in there? What did we see? What do you Marbles. guys see? Marbles? Checkers. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Toy soldiers. Yeah, toy soldiers. And down the stairs we go. A different set of stairs, not original stairs, they said. But it brings us down into the kitchen. looking at Mary's pride and joy. So when they first moved in, let's go back to the layout, what, where you've been and what you've seen so far. So when we first walked in, we had the front parlor, remember, and then it would have been the bedroom. On this side, you were in the sitting room, and the kitchen and dining room when they bought their home were all one room. But for many years, Mary asked for a separate dining room. So in 56, when they add the bedrooms upstairs, they will install this wall, and then that does afford her that separate dining room. Yeah, that's on the now for many saw. years, she is cooking over an open fireplace. My question is, well, what do you do when it's 95 degrees out and you gotta start that fire? I can't imagine. And then they'll buy some cheapy stoves. But now it's 1860. The campaign is coming. They're gonna have a lot of visitors. So they're gonna modernize, and this stove is their version of modernizing. This stove came from New York. Between the cost of the stove, shipping and handling, it was between $20 to $25. <laughs> Again, only wood is burned. I know that seems cheap, but just for a perspective, by the beginning of the Civil War, the average American, and I'm saying family, not person, the average American family is living on about $600 a year. In their backyard, here in the back, where you would have got the water from the well, and the outhouse back there. Here's the back of the house. Jacob, come on, buddy. Let's see where Abraham Lincoln would have squatted. So a couple of interesting things when we were back there in the back parlor when we kind of first started taking the tour, she mentioned that that was originally where the Lincoln bedroom was. And that's also the room that we also mentioned that's where he was told that he got the nomination and everything and where he found out he was president. This is also, that also was the room that unfortunately his son Eddie uh, battled tuberculosis for 53 days and then died in that room. Now they also said the reason that this whole experience was free, which is kind of a rarity for the uh, presidential homes, 
Robert, Robert Todd Lincoln, when he approached the, the state, he said he would sell it to them for a dollar, but he wanted them to maintain the home and never charge anyone to come here. So come visit the Lincoln home for free. What an absolutely amazing experience to get to tour the, the Lincoln home, the home that he bought with next to nothing, $1,500 he purchased this home and then turned it into a two-story family home full of memories. And then back on Route 66 we go. I love this drunken elephant. I was amazed to find this guy last time I was here and I'm not gonna come here and not visit him again. Look at him sitting here drinking his own martini right here on the side of Route 66. Red glowing eyes also. I got places to go and people to see my friend. So do you. You don't see that every day. Somebody just build a big peace swing out front. Shrine to the lady, Our Lady of the Highway. Over here you can see. Mary loving mother of Jesus protect us on the highway. That's great. Just kind of offering you a little uh, good luck and good travels. It says, even though it was wonderful to have a paved hard road to travel on, many motor vehicle accidents did occur on Route 66. 1959, this shrine was erected to remind motorists of the potential dangers and offered a place to say a prayer for a safe journey. This site is lovingly maintained by the family here, Martins. That's a really amazing gesture. And here's a picture from 1959 of when the shrine was dedicated. There's Francis Martin. This is the Martin family farm. So thank you, Francis. Very kind to you. Been very excited about us coming to Litchfield. So it should be great. We're gonna see the uh, Visitor Center Museum here has some great Bob Waldemeyer stuff. This is one of the legendary longtime survivors of Route 66, so we gotta pop in here and give him a little bit of business, I think. Check out this site. I love the, uh, this is the official front of it. And boom, little Route 66 mural here on the ground. Gonna get some food here. Oh, I'm excited already. Very old school. We just ran into some of our friends in here that we met at one of the uh, roadside stops. We saw the, the video yesterday when we were at the towing place with the car 54 car and the piece of the original Route 66. We met this couple there and we said, we're sure we'll see you again. And we did today here. Here they're bragging that they've been here for a hundred years. Established in 1924 and moved to Route 66 in 1935. That's great. Scott went for something light, which is the uh, club sandwich. And I went for something as heavy as possible, like an idiot, and got manicotti. I've had a couple bites. It's actually good. I really like it. Manicotti's good. This is funny. Scott noticed across the room they have an old call box up here for the waitresses. Let them know when their food's up. Our next stop is right across the street from where we just ate. Litchfield Museum and Route 66 Welcome Center. Look at this awesome, awesome neon. Look at this. This is one of the staples of coming to Litchfield is checking out the places we've been and places we're going. Like Henry's Rabbit Ranch, we're going there. Our Lady, we've been there. Chicago, yep, been there, seen that. Getting our kicks, that's happening right now. Look at these, I love these old signs. You can't miss it on 66. Here, this whole thing's about Bob Waldmeyer. He was the guy that was doing a lot of the murals and things like this around here. There's a picture of Bob there, and it says Fillmore from the movie Cars was inspired by Bob. 
So if you like that character, you'd have probably loved Bob. Look at what this building used to look like all lit up. Or probably does actually at night. We won't be here to see it, but it's a great sign. Illinois, where the road began. And they even did the museum like a Burma shave. <laughs> And in this room, more love for Bob as well. Take a look at some of the old license plates that Route 66 would have seen. These are all Illinois plates too. Well, I think we're gonna go ahead and start moving along. Route 66 once again. All right, goodbye Litchfield. See what else Route 66 has in store for us today. Look at this place. I bet that was something at one point. Route 66 Cafe. This is great. We just came up to a corner and found this. Seeing where it all ended at one point and where it began again. 1940 transition period. Now we've made it over to this old shell station. Mount Olive. Take a look at this. Isn't this great? Soulsby Shell Station. This is awesome. It says Russell Soulsby built this station in 1926 with his father, Henry. He ran it with his sister, Ola, until 1991. For 65 years, its operation, they sold only shell gasoline. Huh. I have not seen shell pumps like this in my travels probably ever. The yellow pumps, never seen them. Nice little stop. Ah, oh, if you never have done Route 66, I highly recommend it. This is so much fun. Got old timey TVs in there and some old memorabilia. It's actually open, you can go inside. So cool. Gemini Giant down there. Oh, cool. Look at all this. Whole display cases of shell merchandise. <laughs> That's amazing. This is awesome. This is awesome. And here's the TV we were seeing. There it is, there it is, literally. We've made it to Henry's Rabbit Ranch. Humping to please, that's what this says. So along Route 66, we're gonna see Cadillac Ranch and the Bug Ranch, the VW Bug Ranch, and this is the Rabbit Ranch. You can see this has a closed blasting sign on it, but here, Henry actually has his own version of Cadillac Ranch made out of the rabbit. The rabbit car. Here's his giant rabbit. Looks like it's broken, so he doesn't want anybody on it right now. So we will abide, but it's kind of a famous thing people are always sitting on top of and taking their picture. Now I believe inside the building he actually has rabbits that he grows and this is his rabbit graveyard because he has his rainbow bridge right here and then headstones for all of them. Lots and lots of them. Glad we stopped here and we'll be getting to that pretty soon. So 
So long, Henrys. So here's our next location. It is a flea market with a, well, you can see it for yourself. All right, we have come to our last stop of the day. I've actually been by here several times in my travels and I've never vlogged it because I always ended up finishing my film for the day. <laughs> and this uh, flea market was never open any of the times that I've come by. But here you see a giant Donald Trump and it says, not a political statement. Love him or hate him, still a f good photo op. <laughs> right there same with this uh, dinosaur if you love or hate this dinosaur it's a good photo op look at this guy down here so we make our way around they have a Maryland over here and this is the town of Livingston Illinois that's where we're gonna be ending today this place is really something. This is a, uh, like I said, it's a flea market, but they also have a really cool ice cream diner. And that's what is over here. We're gonna go inside. There's a couple of things inside worth seeing. Like as soon as we came in the door, a giant Abraham Lincoln. I mean, that thing is huge. Right here, they have the world's largest Kit Kat clock. Did you know that? You're gonna see that. This is the fudge shop. And we give you free fudge samples if you would like. Oh, nice. But also when you go around the building and around the, this is where you actually order your food. They got a spaceship and a Paul Bunyan. See a bunch of people are over here and they have a UFO over here. As well as the Paul Bunyan, a couple of hippos. So right here you can see the Route 66 sign and then the freeway is over here of course. You'll see this from the freeway. Look for the big pink elephant. <laughs> and then like I said, you got the giraffe over here, the UFO, it's a real eye catcher. No question about it. It's an eye catching place. A giant tricycle. And last but not least, it's the Harley Davidson Muffler Man, or Paul Bunyan, or whatever you like to call him, standing proudly out here. Gotta love it. Well, my friends, we're gonna call it a day from Route 66. Scott Michaels and I hope you've had a great time. He's out exploring, looking at all these things while I'm wrapping it up. But we will see you all tomorrow in Route 66, on Route 66, exploring the rest of the Mother Road. Have a great night and goodbye.